Rob, good to see you here in a sunny green yards, a, a beautiful ground, one of, the, one of the best in the world, there's no doubt about that. Now, of course, you've been involved, obviously, in Melrose and you're involved with, with Southern Knights. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, the departure of, uh, of the head coach, Rob Christie, he's uh, gone on to the Edinburgh Rugby Academy as the senior yep. coach there, yep. which, which is fantastic news for him. Yep. Uh, we've also seen Mike Dalgetty resign from yep. the organisation as well. So can you bring us up to date with, with what's actually happening? Because there's obviously a lot of Southern Knights fans, Melrose fans want to know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. Sure. Um, well, obviously, Rob, Rob Christie, about two weeks ago, was offered a job with Edinburgh Rugby. He's going to be working with the, the, the level three, the stage three academy players at Edinburgh. So that's a, that's a step up for Rob, and, and he's done a really good job at Melrose over, I think he's been at Melrose about nine years coaching in, in whatever capacity, and then the Southern Knights. And as I say, he's done a really good job, and wish him well. It's, a, it's, it's, it's sport in general, but professional sport even more. Things... Things change and things move on, and and Mike Dalgetty, Dash Dalgetty is another one. You know who has put a power of work into Melrose over a long, long time. I think I was coaching Melrose way back in '97, and he was just getting involved then. So he's been involved for a long, long time, and as I say, really done everything at this club. And uh, wish him well in in a bit of retirement, which he he thoroughly deserves. Um, what we're doing now is we're looking for a, a replacement for Rob. Um, the application is up to be in by this Friday. Um, so early next week we'll look at these, go through them and we'll, we'll interview four or five candidates. And I'd be really surprised and disappointed if we didn't have two, three really good um, replacements in, 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 in mind there. Because this is a really good job for somebody. For somebody who wants to get involved in professional rugby, this would be a great stepping stone for them. How important is it to have someone with, not necessarily from the borders, but someone who understands borders rugby? Yeah, yeah, I, I think I was just talking to one or two of the older guys this morning who come in for their coffee here, and they're, they're obviously asking what's happening, <laughs> as everybody does. You know, I'll go up the street and everybody will say that as well. So if, if there's somebody from Melrose or somebody from the borders, that, that would be an advantage, I think, because they'll know the culture of the place. But we're, we're really keeping very open-minded in this one because we want to just see who we think is the best person to take the Southern Knights forward. I, personally, I think I've not had a lot to do with the Southern Knights. I've just... Colin Meagher and I sort of share director of rugby roles and we've, we've more or less looked at the rest of the club and left Rob Christie and Mike Dogetti with the Knights. So... But I've watched all their games and you know, watched them train. And I think if you look at rugby at the beginning of the season and where they finished, there was there was a fair um, a fair increase in, in everything. I think the crowds are, the crowds improved as it went on. I think people had to realise that the players hadn't played for 18 months or two years. So I think it took everybody two three weeks to get into it. But I think some of the rugby later on was very good. Um, it's very tricky balancing two clubs effectively at one venue, Melrose, yeah, yeah. Southern Knights. Obviously, there's been differences of opinion yeah. going on. How difficult has that been to manage? I mean, you're now coming in and looking after the Southern Knights. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll always be dead honest. It, it is, um, uh, I'll, I'll be involved in the Southern Knights. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll not be managing it, but uh, you know, the director of rugby will take a bigger role in the Southern Knights in looking at that because... Because we need to get the, the two closer because it definitely, it's not two separate clubs but and we all could work harder at that um, and we will. It's still early days as well. It's The whole uh, Super 6, maybe going into Super 7 rugby, you never know, or Super 8, but it's still in its infancy really because of COVID. You've probably had maybe a season and a half or something like that. So it's it's early days. It's the same as everything, you know, that... You and I were talking about the pitch here, you know, when the pitch was looking like a building site, everybody was jumping up and down. Nobody says anything at all about the pitch now, apart from what a great facility for people to play rugby on. So, you know, it's a typical small, small town, small area, everybody has their say. But I think everybody connected with Melrose and Southern Knights has a bit of responsibility to, to pull the club and the Southern Knights closer together.
And you're the man, aren't you, to do it? Because you have been involved with so many clubs, Edinburgh Rugby, Border Reavers, Melrose, of course, and tremendous experience in the game, uh, in and out of the borders. And, uh, and so much respect for you as well from, from many, many places. So this is something which I'm pretty sure you will, you know, put your heart and soul in and, and try and kind of mend bridges and, and get yeah. things rolling. Well, certainly try. I think, you know, for me... Like when I came in and asked me to get involved directly in rugby, they laughed because I said I just want to do the rugby, I don't want to do the politics. So I'm still like that, really. I still, for me, it's all about the rugby. This place is all about giving everybody the opportunity to be the best player they can be, whether you're a five or six year old little mini wanting to come here and play rugby, through to anybody who wants to come and develop their rugby. So it's it's exciting because. Um, this this is a we all it's it's a difficult thing to think your club or the Southern Knights is a stepping stone because we all want to think it's just about us. But you know Jim Telfer walked past us a while ago and, and there's a great example. You know I look at Callum McRae who's coaching at Edinburgh now, John Dell who's coaching Scotland. I spoke to Mark Robertson yesterday who's just back on holiday just now who, who's coaching at Clermont Avern. They're great stories, these. And that's what the club's about. The club's about giving people the opportunity to, to develop themselves. Not to not to stay at Melrose or stay at the Southern Knights. You know, and that's hard for the coach. The coach will want to keep his best players. But what we've got to do is say, look, it's time for that player to move on to pro rugby in Edinburgh, Glasgow, or club player to move on. So that, that, that's what it's about, really. Now, of course, last night I believe you uh, spoke to the players themselves. They, they would have been in, in the dark as well, yep. which is why we've delayed the interview till yep. today. What's been their reaction? I think it's uncertainty for them. They, they'll obviously think, right, who's going to be coaching? Because that'll be different for them. Um, they're, they're all thinking about contrast, because that's what it is in professional sport at, at this time of year, or for them at this time of year, because the season's finished. So we're dead up front when we say, look, the club's having a, a review of the rugby. Uh, it's uh, along with the SRU as well. Looking, the other clubs have looked at how Super Six can improve. So, how can they maybe the SRU support the clubs a bit better? They do well, but how could that improve? So, we want to sit down and do that properly. We we'll sit to the players. We won't hang around. We'll tell them very soon whether they're getting a contract or not. So, they, they'll they'll just find us true to their word. Um, uh, Andy Purvis, who's chairman of the club now, Graham Burgess, the finance director. They were. It takes a lot of money to run this club as well, and um, the last couple of years have not been easy. And um, so they're very honest with the players where we are financially as well. So, um, you know, Melrose, if he'd said maybe three years ago that Melrose wouldn't have had a sevens and they've still got a semi-professional club going, that's that's not been easy for anybody. That so, but. We'll just be upfront and honest with the players, and um, and we've said to players like the last I'm saying 30 years, but when I was a player here, Melrose wasn't as good, and that's obviously because I was playing Stuart. <laughs> but um, but since you know, if I'm looking at the last 30 years, Melrose have always been there and thereabouts in Scottish rugby, so they've always tried to be the best they can be. They've always tried to improve. They've always tried to kick on. Just the same now, very same. Also as well, I mean, before COVID, the, the Super 6 plan was there and it included a cross-border competition yeah. with Wales. Yeah. That seems to have kind of come off the table now and that presumably is a big concern for, for players and, and the club themselves. Yeah, it, it probably is. I'm not sure all that, all the ins and outs here. Um, Andy Purvis had a meeting with the SRU yesterday. They were going over one or two things and I think COVID's killed a lot of that and hopefully that gets moving again. I can remember the good old days when pro rugby started and I was with um, I think I was with it at the time not, be, I was with Glasgow Caledonia they called them at that time and we were we were in a Welsh league there was two the two Scottish teams and ten Welsh teams and we went down the bus so we had ten bus journeys to Wales and that's it was crazy in these days but that's how it was so as I say Super 6 is just starting so it's um, it's hopefully got a rosy future, hopefully. And Mark Dodson, 
at the, the SRU has, has always made no secret of the fact that he wants to build it to a Super 8 and then a Super 10 and yep. you know who knows beyond that yep. uh, and there has been talk in the press this week obviously about London Scottish we've see, all seen the letters yep. the communications that have gone on and the talk of uh, a team in Glasgow which was always one of the criticisms I think early yeah. on yep. get Glasgow involved and of course if you're building teams into it then you're building weeks and weekends into it as yep. well which means more rugby yep. and you, you then wouldn't need to worry about cross-border. No, no, that's very true, Stuart. I think um, the increase is an interesting one because it is, is a strain on everybody. Like, if you look at a club like, like Melrose and you look at having the Southern Knights and the rest of the club, it's a lot of work for a small number of people. Like, so you find there's a game here on a Friday night, it's maybe the Southern Knights. The club team, Melrose team, are playing a Saturday and the Storm and they're under 18s. But who's the stewards? Who's helping wherever? Who are the volunteers? It's the same number of small people. So, you know, people like myself and Andy Purvis are speaking to it. So if there's anybody listening who wants to, seriously wants to volunteer, we're asking everybody because we need, we basically need more help. And every club will say the same. Volunteers are, are thin in the ground wherever you go, Stuart. So to keep this place going and keep it thriving, we need more people putting more into it. Um, you know, you, as I say, we're, we're, and we're, we're, we are one club, but running a semi-professional team and a club team and, and a second team and under 18s, 16s, 15s, all the way down, it's a lot of work. Certainly from a Southern Knights point of view, the team has done really well. They finished top of the table, they made the playoff final, they didn't quite fire on all cylinders in the final, yep. but there's no mistaking the fact that... Uh, there's a lot of interest yeah. came from Super Six. Yeah, no, definitely sure. You know, we the, the, the club found here there was people coming to the Super Six games that obviously don't come to the club games. So there's a sort of different crowd in a way. So that's good. There's more people come to watch the game. And as as you say, that everybody connected with, with the Southern Knights, the players and the coaches and management, they're really disappointed to lose their final to air. But I'm a bit old fashioned. They were top of the league, you know. <laughs> And the air game's a one-off game, which any, anybody can win, and well done air. But for me... The a league is a league. Yeah, a league is a league. And the best thing for me was how well the players developed over the season, individually and collectively. You could see that anybody come to watch the games could see the improvement from the beginning to end. And that's all we're wanting all the time. You know, that, that they enjoy it, the players... In, enjoyment is sometimes the last thing anybody says. That's why we're all doing it. It doesn't matter whether people get a bit of money... And the Super Six boys are not getting big money. Um, I'm, I'm, I could be controversial and say there's people playing club rugby getting paid more than them, which I think is fundamentally wrong. I think it should be amateur or pro. And I think that's, that's just my view and it probably always has been. So, so these guys are putting a lot into it and not getting a lot back financially. So I think they, need, they deserve a pat on the back, all, all the Super Six teams. But there's, there's not enough money to go around to be paying players in the Premiership. If... Players have got aspirations to move on. They should be playing Super Six or professional rugby, and that's, for, in my opinion, where they should get paid. Um, premiership clubs that keep trying to pay players, Stuart, I, I do think that's the future for them. That, that's just my opinion. And people would say, because people say, well, Melrose did it before and whatever else, but they've set up a semi professional setup now, and, and for me, that's where people should get paid. Below that, it should be amateur. We must say, of course, that the Melrose club side in National 1 have really come on leaps and bounds. And, I mean, they, they've hit the ground running because a lot of their best players obviously have gone to Southern Knights. It's yeah. been a big rebuild for them, and they're doing very, very well. Yeah, no, we're, we're pleased to them. Bruce Rutherford, Bert Grieg and the rest of the coaches there, they're, they're doing a really good job there. I mean, they've got a super, a super bunch of young, young players there. They're very young, and the, the team below them, the Storm, they're unbeaten just now, and they're... That, that team's probably an under-20 team almost, you know, with one or two older players, but they are very young. So, no, we're, we've actually lost two or three players in the last um, the last month, which I could probably see happening. Um, and that's just because we've got that many players training. We're probably averaging about 50 players training, and that's not the Southern Knights, that's just the other senior players. And So there's there's five subs with the first team, seven subs with the second team, because that's already allowed. And two weeks ago, we had eight, eight or nine players that weren't getting a game. So it's it's not easy. It's a good problem. 
but we we knew maybe lose one or two because they, they think they can go somewhere else and get a game. But we, we've just got to get on with that because if we're true to your word, it's about giving people an opportunity here to play rugby, enjoy it, and we're trying to, you know, progress them on, make them the best player they can be. So if they leave, they're always welcome to come back, even socially. We've got to make sure of that. Now, one thing we must ask you before we uh, before we end this yep. is the Melrose Sevens. Now, everyone's been dying for news yep. in the last four or five weeks, and I know yep. I've put off meetings with uh, with certain people at, at yep. the club um, because things keep changing week on week yeah, on. Yeah. It's obviously not an easy thing to organise. No. We know this is one of the biggest events in the world. Yep. But what can you tell us at this moment? Yeah, well, what I can say is there will be a Melrose Sevens next next April on the second Saturday in April. Um, arrangements are still Phil Morris is driving that and he's still finalising things just now and it might not be the three day event um, because of Covid and all the problems that that might because nobody knows it's uncertain what, what we're going to be like in April even and people coming in and whatever else So, but there will be a Melrose Sevens on the second, second Saturday in April next year and we might have something later in the summer as well. But c certainly, the, the club needs Melrose Sevens in every way. You know, like you were saying before, I'm involved, I'm actually chairman of the Melrose Festival. They've not had a festival since I was chairman, I think I'm a jinx on that as well. So, um, And we're just saying, that needs to happen. You can't, you know, I, I think there'll be a real, a real buzz about Melrose Sevens. Like, I think most things that have not happened, as soon as they come back again, everybody says, Woof. it's like, I wasn't at Murrayfield on Saturday, but I've spoken to quite a few people who absolutely loved it because it was full. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was like being a kid again, you know, it was like, yeah, I'm, I can go to Murrayfield, there's a great atmosphere, so I w I'd be really disappointed if that's what people do, think of Melrose Sevens, you know, it's basically rugby, but it's a real good day out as well, so, yeah, no, sure, <laughs> I'm, I, I like a bet, but, you know, I would, I would, it would be, it would be, it would be, the odds would be, you know, very much in favour of Melrose 7 second Saturday in April. There was a lot of chat, of course, uh, where, before COVID again, um, about the new, the new look Melrose Sevens, and it was going to be a big festival, three day, maybe even four days, yeah. music, big country, and yeah, all these yeah, sort of people. Yeah. And uh, and there was talk, obviously, about the tournament, yeah. uh, whether it was going to be extended, yeah. how it would work with the Super Six teams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think yeah. initially they came up with the idea of your normal sevens on the Saturday yep. and then a Super 6 kind of tournament yep. with maybe guest size like Samurai or whatever yeah, yeah. Um, on the Sunday. Yeah. Is that still on the table? I don't think that'll happen. Um, I'm not going to steal Phil Morris's thunder because Phil should be announcing this. But that, that initially was the plan and everyone knew that two years ago or whatever that there would be an under-18 tournament on the Friday. There'd be some in the Thursday night as well, but not rugby, but not rugby playing it would be a, a question and answer a, um, a get together of personalities and whatever just rugby good rugby chat the Friday was going to be an under 18 tournament club tournament on the Saturday and then a, a semi pro or super 6 plus other teams on Sunday um, I, I don't think that will all happen just because of the, the just the sheer logistics of trying to bring people in and you know, just say there was an outbreak of COVID on the Friday, what happens then? You know, it, so I think they'll scale it down um, and just make sure Melrose Simmons appear as normal on the Saturday and, and have a good day out, because that's what people want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and if someone has to be sacrificed, I suppose it, you, what you're saying really between the lines is the Super 6 clubs and players won't be able to compete in the normal tournament, yeah, it, it may be. I think I think that the problem Ellis has always had. I think you know people are, it's like everything else, are pretty sceptical of that. But I've always thought over the last good number of years, it's been very difficult for Melrose in the the normal tournament who to invite, because if you invite, I remember Glasgow coming down here with a, a full strength team, Matawala and these guys, and they just walked the tournament. Now. I, I like to watch a rugby at Melrose Sevens. I know I like a day out as well, but I want to watch a rugby. And when you know from the first, the first minute that team's going to win the tournament, I, and you can see what's good for other teams to play against them. It's good experience. 
the, the gulf and the gulf gets bigger and bigger between amateur and pro physically like if I watch the Southern Knights on a Friday and I watch the club club games on the Saturday skill level should be a bit higher which it maybe is but it's the sheer physicality of the games you know and it's the size you look at pro rugby you go anybody goes and watches a pro team training now it's um, it's big boys and um, so that's the difference and I think it almost gets dangerous then yeah. I, I don't think it's a good experience for, for that, even though it's sevens, because sevens, sevens are a pretty physical game as well. And as you've explained, I mean, back in the old days when you had Campese and uh, yeah. all these big stars playing here, it was obviously great to watch. But let's not forget the club sides like Gala and Hoyk and all that, they, they were packed with internationals yeah. themselves. So that's the difference you're, you're talking about. No, it is, it is true, yeah. I mean, it would be... I think it'd be great to see that happen again. It'd be great to see international players playing here. But that could be done on the Sunday. It can exactly, and I'm I'm sure that'll happen again because, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not insular or parochial, but wherever you go in the world, everybody knows about Melrose Sevens. You know, like if you if you mention Melrose, they say, oh yeah, that's where Sevens started. So players, there is a pool for players to play here. So, so a tournament with some. I've always, because I was involved in the sevens for years as, as well, it's, it's a real shame that the top players don't get to play sevens. You know, there'll be, Stuart Hogg's a great example. I remember him playing as a kid. He was a superb sevens player. You can imagine Finn Russell playing sevens. Mm. You know, so people will love that. So, you so really, know. there's a fantastic opportunity yeah. now with the pitch as well yeah, that yeah. you have to have, you know, your traditional Melrose Sevens on the Saturday yep. and an even bigger one on, on the Sunday. I mean, I know a lot of people have been campaigning for years to get the World Series yep. down here. Um, there's no reason why this couldn't actually be the catalyst for something absolutely huge. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And and the club will the club will try and do that, Stuart, I, I can assure you. The club, will try and, the, tra- the club will try and take it as far as they possibly can. I remember years ago there was talk of the World Series coming here even playing, say, the first day here and then maybe the second day at Murrayfield. Uh, it never really happened. Um, and I, I remember I'd seen that in Wales before where uh, they played, I can't remember, it was maybe Bridge End or something, the first day then played at Cardiff in the second. There's there's a lot of possibilities, but to, to see the best players playing seven, the problem with that is, is their clubs and international rugby, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy getting the best players now. It's a lot easier though now than it was say five years ago when the, the whole thing was rejected and a lot of that was because of uh, logistics, a, a lack of infrastructure, a lack of accommodation. Yeah. That's That has improved, there's a long way still to go but yeah. you know, never say never for the future. Oh, I absolutely Stuart and uh, you know I think uh, the, the club will make an announcement in the Sims but I think it'll be scaled back but that's because of Covid and let's just make sure that the, the most important thing next April that is that there, there is a tournament and we get Merrill Simmons going again. And nice to know there could be another one as well. Yeah, well, exactly, exactly.